Hi guys, welcome to Mikaro Handsome World. Today I want to introduce you guys my friend Yeo. He he was for he was for the strategic uh, consultant and venture capitalist, and recently he created a, a fintech company. Uh, most of all, I, the reason why I want to introduce him uh, to you guys because he's handsome, brilliant, and at the same time very charming personally, right? So that's why you, you're in here, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, Guillaume, welcome to my channel. Mm. Thank you for having me. <laughs> you have a certification of Mikaro Handsome World. So, uh, who are you? You don't know me? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Why uh, you? Yeah. So mm. my name is Guillaume. Mm. Uh, I'm French. However, I've been living outside of France for the better part of 11 years now. Uh, 11 years? Yeah. Whoa. So I left right after high school and I went to do my bachelor's in Canada. Then I mm. went to China for China. two years. Uh, mm. Four years, sorry. Why four. China? Uh, I don't know why. Yeah. Each, time, each time I move to a country, I don't know why I moved. Oh. <laughs> I was just like, oh, yeah, why not? <laughs> yeah. I had a lot of Chinese friends at the time, so mm. I just took care. Ah, yeah. at the moment, you when, when you studied in Canada, you already have yeah, yeah. some... Ah, so yeah. that's why you uh, naturally went there? Yeah, that's right. Oh. So I mm. went to China. I did like two years in Shanghai where I, I worked in consulting. Um, and learned Chinese at the same time. And then two years after that, I did my master's in Beijing at the Tsinghua oh, University. Wow. Uh, after that, I came to Korea, worked a bit in venture capital, and then eventually I created my own fintech company uh, mm. with a friend. So, wow. Yeah. But after China, why you choose the Korea? To so work or what? No, uh, at first, I wanted to go back to China. Uh, the thing <laughs> is, I, I mm. first came as an exchange student, right on January 2020. Ah, so, we did China. Yeah, yeah. Ah, so okay, okay. at that time, January, just before the COVID pandemic, mm -hmm. and so I got stuck here. And then eventually I couldn't go back to China mm. and to, to find a job here, because mm. I didn't want to go back to France either. Oh, but so far so then how long have you lived in korea uh, no, no three years and a half three years and a half yeah. and also you learned korean i did <laughs> that's really but, bad <laughs> when you you speak uh chinese super fluently uh much oh. better than my oh, korean it, that's no for sure. no super fluently it it was it, it's super impressive i wow. was surprised you also, you told me, you told me, I didn't check. You can speak, of course, you can speak fluent English and Spanish. Spanish I used to be, so uh -huh. my, my bachelor's was taught in Spanish, partly. Uh -huh. uh, however, now it, uh, I haven't practiced at all since eight years, four, eight years. So um. yeah, it, it's very, but very rusty. <laughs> <laughs> but French, English, what Chinese. is Chinese? I think that's, that's like the main ones. Ah, three, three yeah. languages main, and yeah. then uh, Spanish, Spanish and Korean. Yeah, Spanish comes back way quicker for me. French people, like for French yeah, people, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The similar it's very similar. So it comes super or something, right? mm -hmm. Yeah, compared to Korean, that's like yeah, 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 yeah. infinitely more easier. Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> but still, you have a lot of languages. Yeah, uh, that's yes. why you, I invite you here. You're brilliant. Uh -huh. But I have to check your handsome one now, right? <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> anyway, so I I wonder why you uh, create your own company. Uh, I and why fintech? What's the fintech by the way? So, so financial technology first. Mm -hmm. I have a background in finance and strategy. Even when I was working in strategy consulting, I was working working mostly with fintech companies actually. Mm -hmm. So I. I know already a bit about that. Mm. And then as a <laughs> former VC, my VC? venture capital, capital. yeah. Mm -mm. My VC, very good VC friend, also alumni from my school. Mm. Uh, just we he had this idea and I really liked it. So mm. just okay. We're already VC. very familiar with the, the whole the startup ecosystem. So I said, okay, I'm not afraid to do a startup. So Oh, uh, why just, you why you didn't afraid of uh, 
startup because startup is very risky. No? Yeah, but like because you you like risk. risk. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> no, the thing is, like, okay. uh, in VC, you're very familiar with startups, so you know mm. how it works. You know the risks. Uh, mm. I know the risks. It's, it's fine. It's it's mm. tough. It's very tough, mm. but it's okay. But it's very different role uh, as a, a venture capitalist, a strat a strat strat strategy consultant, mm -hmm. and. Uh, owning and managing uh, own uh, company startup. Mm. Is it different? No, no, not that different. There's a lot of common points. Really? It's okay. Uh, what I do, so do a lot of strategy. I've always done a lot of strategy, and mm. even in my startup currently, we do a lot of strategy. So it's not that different. Mm. Obviously, I also manage a whole bunch of other things, which I would, I like or I don't. Some of them I don't like. Mm. Uh, just. Yeah, there's not too different, especially in my field. In our field, it's like there's a lot of like commonalities. Mm. Like, we do mostly like uh, mm. fund management kind of thing, so oh. it's very similar to venture mm. capital in the end. Oh, really? Mm. So then, uh, as a founder of a startup, mm -hmm. um, what what are the key uh, lessons have you learned about? about entrepreneurship and like a building business? Um, <laughs> it's very broad. Um, yeah, but what's the entrepreneurship? So, I mean, everybody's going to have a different uh, take on that. Yeah, yeah. For me, I always think that you have to be a bit not too passionate. You have to be... Not too passionate? Okay, you have to be very interested in what you do. Mm -mm. You have to be passionate enough so that you have enough grit. That means like you want to push it as far as you can mm -hmm. and you have the motivation to do that mm -hmm. but if you're too passionate about your idea sometimes you get blinded by it and yeah. i don't think it's a good mm -hmm. thing mm -hmm. necessarily uh mm -hmm. you have to be somewhat cold uh, my, that's my opinion you have to be somewhat cold towards your business a bit mm -hmm. it's like okay maybe you know you thought it was a good idea mm -hmm. you shouldn't be attached to it if it's yeah, actually yeah, a bad yeah, idea yeah, and good be point. willing mm -hmm. to yeah, yeah. to mm -hmm. to move mm -hmm. It's very difficult to detach detach their own idea because that idea is like a they Yeah, it's your baby. It's like when you grow <laughs> yeah, it and stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, but yeah, yeah. So you how how could you do that? Because your personality is mm. not that difficult or you're Maybe, like yeah. a computer so it's <sighs> difficult. it's not that difficult, right? You you always Distance no. okay. from all these things, so that's why. Uh, I think it's so. <laughs> not, no. <laughs> no, no, uh, no, no, I don't. I, think I mean, so. there is a bit of that, but it's just, I think, because I worked in that field for a while. Uh, I'm intrinsically conscious, okay. like conscious. inwardly conscious of mm. what, some of the basics, right? Of, like why you should not, should or should not do that. Because, mm. um, like, it's never going to be a problem mm. if you are a bit cold towards that. And I'm still very passionate about what I do. But like mm. if the next day you tell me, oh, it's not doable, mm. or it's a very bad idea because the market or whatever, mm. uh, then I will mm -hmm. find something else. I'm oh. not like 100% focused on, oh, I need to do that. I 100% need to implement it. Um, wow. Just, just, I Interesting. I, I think I, I cannot do maybe I don't know it's just it's mm. just a different uh, mm. way of thinking mm -hmm. have to train the thoughts uh, if I want to manage uh, my own business right it's just personal maybe. way of doing things it doesn't necessarily mean that the, okay. it's applicable to everybody it's just mm. it makes also managing failure mm. and mm. losses uh, mm -hmm. easier mm. right because you're always ready to jump Maybe not jump ship, but like mm -hmm. to to mm -hmm. move forward, mm -hmm. pivot. Mm -hmm. That's one thing, and that's mm -hmm. a bit technical, more technical for mm -hmm. entrepreneurship. But like, mm -hmm. if your idea, mm -hmm. usually your first idea rarely works, you mm -hmm. have to change it and change it, yeah. iterate over it, Enjoy. and so you so you change your idea mm -hmm. constantly, mm -hmm. even during your business, mm -hmm. and you have to be willing to do that, because maybe the first idea you have or the second or third mm -hmm. don't really have a market fit. Mm. So you need to change it. Anyway. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Interesting. So you never regret uh, about your career so far? Or no. 
Not really. It's like, you, you... Uh, I am in a very different position than a lot of my peers back in mm -hmm. my master's, mm -hmm. my graduate school, mm -hmm. um, for sure. Because like they all went to big corporates. Mm -hmm. However, I think the skills I acquired are pretty good in my field. And yeah. even in the startup, usually if mm -hmm. you go into the startup field, it's really hard to exit mm -hmm. from it. Mm -hmm. uh, however, I think the skills I acquired doing this startup mm -hmm. are really transferable back to, uh, back to if I were to work again in, in finance or... Your previous job. Yeah, previous yeah. job uh, or So you don't have, consulting. you don't, you, you don't feel pressure a lot? I do feel pressure from the business, <laughs> but like, <laughs> like career-wise, I think it's okay. And also like, I'm very young, it's okay to, to do these mm. kind of things. So okay. what's good about mm. Korea yeah. first is that oh, there's a lot of Korean mm. government subsidies for startups. Yeah, a lot of, right? Yeah, Tons too much job. actually. Too much, right? And actually, I think that's quite detrimental to some extent mm. to the Korean innovation ecosystem because mm -hmm. that creates a lot of startups that are entirely dependent mm. on government subsidies and that means they cannot survive without them. Yeah, yeah. Which means that they cannot grow past a certain point and they just mm. basically are dependent on taxpayer money because the, the money mm. from the subsidies comes from your taxes. Mm -hmm. True, true. Uh, mm -hmm. So I think that's not mm -hmm. super sustainable. That doesn't mean it's applicable to all the startups, but you have a lot of like what we call zombie startups. Zombie startup? What's yeah. the zombie startup? Just those kind of startups that Just rely entirely on the government on government it's projects. It's possible to uh, rely on whole stage to yeah, the... So only yeah? government projects. And they oh, only do that. And often those government projects are just projects to promote innovation mm -hmm. and not projects that actually have a impact on society. Mm. Directly, mm. it doesn't mean that's all projects again, but like you get a lot of like uh, mm. creating some project mm. that have no, make no sense mm. in the short or long run. Mm. Okay. So, that, that mm -mm. the problem with Korea mm -mm. compared to Singapore is that mm. there's a lot of red tape, uh, so it's very hard to break in. There's a lot of administration, mm. uh, it's really tough. Mm. And then it's a very, it's a smaller market. It's hard to break in because like it's a very relationship based market. Even though Southeast Asia is the same, people are much more willing to, as long as there, there is some kind of benefits for both parties, they're much more willing to engage in business with, mm. even with the startup. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not the case in Korea. Mm -hmm. It's a bit more difficult. You have mm. to have relationships, you have to know people, you have to mm. nurture those relationships, and that's often... Mm. Uh, you mean network? Yeah, networking. Mm -hmm. then, so, mm -hmm. network is important everywhere. Yeah, yeah. But, but the implication of it are sometimes some, somewhat different from one culture to another. In mm -hmm. Korea, mm -hmm. it's a bit more... The network part is a bit more complicated, I feel. Especially as a foreigner, it's a bit daunting. Oh. Yeah, it's a bit difficult to break in some circles. Where like, mm. if you have in some other countries, if you have a good product, if you have a good thing, mm -mm. it's and you have a actual mm -mm. fit, then mm -mm. you can definitely talk to some people and get mm. introduced to them, and that mm. will work. Mm -mm. In Korea, that might not be the case. Oh. Always, because like you need to know someone to know someone, and then even then, mm. it's tougher. Because like they they would mm. talk usually by at the same str strata, at the same layer of uh, hierarchy. So oh. anyway, it's just uh, okay. It's a bit more oh no no no, interesting. Yeah. Uh, okay, thank you for That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> experience perfectly in detail. Long time. You always to the right. Thank you. It's all right. My pleasure. <laughs> <laughs>